How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. This is episode number four of Back to the Mac. I'm titling this week's episode, Breaking Up with the Magic Mouse and Magic Keyboard. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I am a huge fan of Apple's Magic accessories, especially the Magic Mouse. I've used this thing for years. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I've kept using it despite the pain that I've suffered through. <laughs> so, so the reason that I'm switching from the Magic Mouse and Magic Keyboard is due to these devices' lack of ergonomics. They're un, un ergonomic, meaning it's super flat. It doesn't really go with the curve of your hand and it's just not very comfortable for a lot of people. Now, I know some people are very big fans of the Magic Mouse, so I know that you exist and I know some people are okay with it. In fact, I was okay with it for years, but after your hands get so much mileage on them, then the problems start to creep up. That's called getting older. So the problem with RSI, repetitive stress injury, I guess that's what it stands for, and things like carpal tunnel is that it can completely incapacitate you as far as getting work done, typing, clicking with the mouse, etc. I look at it as like the equivalent of an ACL tear for a basketball player. Now, obviously what I do typing and clicking every day is a lot more strenuous than what a football player or a basketball player would go through on a day-to-day -day basis, but I wanted to give you something that you could, you could understand. So guys and gals, tell me, how do you go about keeping your wrists and your fingers healthy when you're using a computer all day? Uh, do you use a magic mouse? Do you use a magic keyboard? Have you decided to use something else? Do you have any sort of accessories that you use? Please let me know down below in the comment section. Please share the knowledge and help us all out. But let me just talk about what I recently switched over to. So we have, so I went from this right here to this right here. Now this is obviously the Logitech MX Master 2S, which is super popular amongst creatives. It is very, very customizable and it has a somewhat ergonomic layout. And I recently switched from this to this right here. This is the WASD keyboard, a customizable mechanical keyboard. Now this is not a decision that I took lightly at all. I, I mean, it affects the way I work. The input devices really do change the way I work to some degree. Uh, thankfully though, these two accessories have proven to be very good alternatives. In fact, in some cases better, even from just a productivity standpoint than what it's replacing, let alone the ergonomic value that they bring to the table. Now with the Magic Keyboard, you're bottoming out so quickly when you press a key. Like as soon as you press a key, you're basically hitting metal you know you're you're hitting the metal with your fingers with little to no cushioning uh, and that cushioning comes from the keys you know the, you just get that little bitty piece of cushioning from the keys so the biggest problem with the magic mouse is that it's so flat like i said it's almost like controlling your mac with a piece of toast except i think toast tastes a lot better that's actually better than i expected hmm. but seriously it's like it's so flat that there's just no room for your for your hand to really rest properly. I don't know. I'm not gonna get into the whole ergonomics of it, like the, the technical aspects of the ergonomics. I just know my wrist doesn't do very well after years of using this mouse. In a similar thing with the keyboard, it's like the keys are so shallow. If you have not tried a mechanical keyboard, you owe it to yourself to try one. Now the benefit of something like the WASD keyboard is that it is fully customizable. So you can customize the type of switches. You can use Cherry MX Brown, Reds, Clears, uh, Greens, uh, Blue, obviously. You can also customize the layout of the keyboard along with customizing the color of the keycaps, which, I mean, you can make your own design. You can even upload your own design and really go crazy with the customization. But my question is this. Why are there no good wireless mechanical keyboards available? Why is that such a rare thing? A good, solid, wireless mechanical keyboard. Why does no one make, I mean, there's a few, Logitech makes one, but it's not one that I would consider buying. That is my main complaint with the WASD keyboard is that it uses a USB cable to connect to your Mac. And not just a USB cable, it uses micro USB, which is like, why? 
in 2018. But other than that nitpicky complaint, I really love the WASD keyboard. It's an excellent keyboard, lots of key travel, uh, very nice tactile response, wonderful design, and it's also well-built, well-constructed. It feels like it's gonna last forever. Now the MX Master, at least for me, takes some getting used to because I'm just so used to using swipe gestures. It's one of the reasons why I decided to keep my Magic Trackpad and sort of use it in combination with this little mouse here. Now I love the ergonomics of the MX Master 2S, but it takes some getting used to. There are some sort of gesture-like features and it's extremely customizable. You can customize on an individual app-by-app -app basis if you want to, really customize the buttons. And here's one of my favorite things, this little horizontal scroll wheel, which is great for navigating in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'll conclude it with this. Obviously Apple, a big part of what makes Apple Apple is that they really focus on design. And that is perfectly fine. In fact, I, I applaud that because that is what one of the reasons why their products are so appealing. However, I think as of late, their focus on design has been a detriment to the actual user experience. In some cases, not all cases, but for instance, I'll just show you something and then you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. So, I rest my case. But seriously, for an input device, your primary input device like a keyboard or a mouse, it's super important that those things be usable. Um, and not only usable in the short term, but also over a long period of time. At the very least, I wish Apple offered us an ergonomic mouse that still had the functionality of the Magic Mouse, but was actually, again, I know it's popular to wanna to stir the pot and just, just complain for the sake of complaining, but that is not the reason I'm doing this. I'm actually like experiencing these problems with my wrists, with my fingers, and it's something that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's briefly talk about some of the relevant news items from last week. A new app called OneCast claims to bring Xbox One game streaming to Mac users for the first time. Now this is a feature that Microsoft only supports natively in Windows, of course. Previously, people have done things like use parallels to create a virtual machine for Windows on a Mac and then use Microsoft software to connect to their Xbox One, but obviously that is not the ideal situation. OneCast sounds fairly promising if it can live up to its billing. OneCast is claiming to provide native 1080p game streaming on the Mac. Now, I don't know if this works personally. I don't have an Xbox One, unfortunately. This is my gaming machine of choice. Thumbs up for the Switch. And here's another interesting piece of news. TweetDeck is limiting usage of multiple accounts to comply with anti-spam Twitter rules. Now, now, the change that TweetDeck implemented will prevent users from selecting multiple accounts and then performing actions like retweeting, liking, following, etc. That's all fine and dandy, probably a good thing, but hey, how about updating the app as well so that it doesn't crash every 15 minutes? And then lastly, I posted last week about my experiment with a 10 gigabit ethernet connected Synology NAS in Final Cut Pro 10. One of the biggest advantages is that your NAS could be somewhere else in your office building and you could run ethernet cable directly to your iMac Pro and be able to edit video directly from the Synology NAS. It's not gonna be for everybody, but please check out the full post for more details. And that will conclude this week's look at the news. Back to you, Jeff. Now we didn't have an unboxing this week, but we did have a few reviews. First of all, the SK2520 from Akidio is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 enclosure. So that gives you 10 gigabits per second maximum bandwidth. Very nice enclosure that's bus powered. Now, the next item we looked at was the Thunder 3 RAID station from Akidio as well. I praise this because of its built-in thumb screws. So it's a completely toolless installation, super handy, super convenient. And it also has a UHS-2 reader on front and lots of other IO like USB 3.1, ethernet, display port, etc. Okay, so last episode, we were giving away a copy of Affinity Designer for the Mac, which is like a $50 value. And we've chosen a winner. It is Ankur Puri on Instagram. Ankur Puri, 
His uh, username is blindbat underscore photo. So congratulations, Ankur. You have won Affinity Designer for the Mac. This week, we're going to be giving away two copies of Flume Pro. Now, Flume Pro, we've already discussed that in a previous episode of Back to the Mac. It is a desktop Instagram client that has a lot of power user features, and it makes it easy to directly manage your Instagram accounts, multiple accounts even, from your Mac. It's the best desktop Instagram app I've ever used, and I highly recommend it. So same exact deal as last time. If you want to enter to win, head over to our Instagram page at 9to5Mac, like the post related to Back to the Mac episode number four, and then leave a comment as to why you want to win. Super simple, super easy. So here we are with our questions and answers. If you do have a question, use hashtag Back to the Mac on Twitter, Instagram. You can, of course, DM me. I'll try to answer your question. I can't guarantee that I will. Uh, of course, you can email as well. Um, you can snail mail. You can send a smoke signal if you want to do that. So the first question is from Alexandru. He says, great video, really love your work. I was wondering, what is the CPU monitoring app that you use on your Mac? That would be iStat Menus, one of the best ways to keep tabs on your Mac with regard to CPU usage, GPU usage, memory usage. Of course, you could use Apple's built-in activity monitor tool, but this makes it so much more fun and more interactive to, to monitor your Mac. And it has some additional features that Activity Monitor does not have as well. And the next name I get to butcher is Kafsa Binhar. <laughs> Sorry, dude. He asked the question, why put your dock on, on the left when you can just hide your dock? A lot of people ask me that. I, I don't like hiding my dock. I'm a visual person, so I like to see what's running. For one thing, I just don't like how slow the dock is, the auto hiding. I know you can speed it up using the command line. I just, I just never fool with that. But maybe I will consider hiding the dock once I speed it up using the command line. Uh, and I'll give that a shot for a week to see how I do. And then this last, not so much a question, but a statement from Joe Funicelli, he says, someone call the Wambulance, seriously, nine to five Mac, you can do better than this. I guess he was referring to last episode where we were talking about the MacBook Pro, giving some constructive criticism. Listen, dude, I, I'm not, I'm a big Apple fan, obviously, but I can't just sit here and pretend that there isn't a problem when I strongly believe that there are some problems with their designs, not all their designs, but some of them, yes, I think there are problems. And I'm not just complaining just for the sake of complaining. So call the Wambulance. Tell them to bring me some toast. I want some good toast. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this latest episode of Back to the Mac. Actually, this is technically episode number five. I uploaded episode number four. I thought it was trash, so I just refused to post it. Maybe one day I'll unlist the video and just post the link out there for you guys if you want to watch that. But to me, it was trash, so I just didn't want to post it. So, But I just want to say I appreciate so much your support. I was literally blown away by how many people like watched the video, how many people interacted and engaged with the video. Please thumbs up if you appreciated it, thumbs down if you didn't, and let me know down below in the comment section your thoughts and opinions. Until next time, folks, this is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. Talk to you later.